So Tom, I, I appreciate you jumping on here. Um, I'll kind of I'll kind of take it from here. You and I recorded a segment here a couple months ago when Nick Brooks committed, and it, of course you're no you know you're not you don't have some crystal ball to foresee the future. But I remember us having this discussion uh, about his future and how solid his commitment to Iowa was. And I remember making the comparison to the Caden Proctor situation, and you kind of said, "Oh, well, let's let's." Treat this uniquely is not Caden Proctor. I don't think his focus is maybe where Caden Proctor's family's focus was, and etc. The circumstances are just different, and I'm sure you wouldn't change your uh, tune on that yeah. note. But the news today that Nick Brooks is decommitted from Iowa, I think, blindsided a lot of people. We knew he came off an official visit to Texas Tech. Were you surprised by this news, and how have things changed within just a couple of months? Wasn't surprised once I saw he took a visit. Um, because of, uh, here's what I think. I think the kid just wants to take more visits and in order to take more visits and st still stay in the good graces of the place where he may end up going, University of Iowa, he just decommitted. You know, I, I think that's really just all this was at this point is a kid that wanted to see more places, take more visits. And in order to do that, um, he had to decommit. So um, I, don't, I don't know that there's really a whole lot more behind it than, than that. I don't know that there were bags of money or, you know, deals or anything. It just seems like the kid wants to – it was it was curious last week when he put up the thing about Texas Tech offering him. Usually that's an indication. And then he sh shows up on Instagram down in Lubbock, and uh, there you go. So – We'll see what happens from here, but you know, again, he's a 2025 kid, so we're a year and a month plus from him being able to sign anywhere. So it's nothing about a bag of Lubbock loot. Yes. <laughs> you yeah, don't think I, I just, I just think, I think I will probably communicated with them. Hey, if you if you want to take visits, you can take visits, but just let us know, and if you want to take them, just you know, it's probably best that you just decommit and, and, uh, you know, it's, it's like, if you're going to get married, if you're going to get married, you can't go out on a, on dates with other people. So Iowa looks at commitments like that as like a marriage. And, uh, if you want to date, you can go ahead and date, but we're not going to be consider ourselves married to you anymore either. So I know that, that, that brings up a whole new can of worms for me, Mark or, uh, Tom. So excuse me, because, Caden Proctor took a bunch of visits as he was committed. So just explain to the common fan why he was allowed to do that while staying engaged to Iowa and Nick Brooks was not. Well, I don't, I, it's not like being allowed. It was just, Hey, if you want to do it the right way, this is how you do it. Okay. Proctor probably just said, I just going to go ahead and do these things. You know, they communicated to him that, those things, those exact same things. Brooks is just going to be more upfront about it and just decide to decommit. Does that make sense, Mark? Well, uh, I, it sounds like that there are different standards for different uh, talent levels or something. Maybe I'm reading too much into that, but it, um, it, it, it there seems to be a strong preference toward wanting that commitment to stick at Iowa. And I can certainly respect that because otherwise why commit I've always wondered that, you know, if you're not sure, then yeah. don't commit. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's the thing I always come back to. If you if you've got any wavering, it's not like you're reserving your place. If you want to, you know, it, I use the marriage analogy. Kirk French uses it too. It's just like, are we are we holding hands? Or are we getting married? You know, and if you're you want to hold hands and you want to go out on other dates, perfectly fine. And Iowa can't prevent someone from doing that. And kids could take up to 10 visits now. And if you do that, that's fine. But um, we're not going to, we're also going to go on dates. You know, we're going to go pursue some other guys in that class that, that, um, you know, now that that spot's open. And that's probably what I was saying right now is, all right, we'll find some other old linemen that um, maybe we, we had already kind of started to move on from because we got this kid committed Maybe we'll look at guys and, and see if they're interested in coming on 
campus and getting visits in. A couple things I just want to add on to this. So I don't know if it was my conversation with you, Tom, or I know we talked to Elliot uh, Clough from the rival rival site when this occurred, when the commitment happened. But one of you told me that you expect at the time you expected him to take these other visits. Maybe that wasn't you, Tom. Maybe that was Elliot that said that. But again, I go back to that. If he was expected to take the other visits when he committed, what has changed? But I also wonder, is there maybe more of a, with what happened with Caden Proctor in that situation, maybe a little bit of a different approach to communication from Iowa than prior, just to not have a repeat of what happened with Proctor? Well, I know that Iowa told him when he committed, hey, these are kind of the expectations. If you commit, this is kind of how we view things. We're not going to go out and recruit other guys or for your spot. We're not going to dump you for another guy. You're committed. We're committed. We're going to move forward together. Um, but we also have an expectation that you don't go out on visits with other on other to other programs and, um, you know, potentially pursue those programs or that let those programs continue to pursue you. It's, it's a two way street, you know, I was not going to do their, do their recruiting anymore. They just consider that spot full or filled. I should say not full, but filled. And they expect to get to honor that. And I, I don't think that's an unfair ask. I don't, but I just don't think they should d- just don't commit, you know, right. wait. Yeah. If you're good enough, they'll hold a spot for you. Well, I guess, again, I keep saying two things, but two things to follow up on that, Tom. He, he and I don't want to di- over dissect this and maybe I'm known for doing this, but with, with Nick Brooks, um, I think it's fair to say, regardless, maybe he ends up back at Iowa. That's that's fair, and I'd much rather yes. an Iowa guy. I'd much rather him make this decision, this announcement now, than on signing day or the signing week, yeah. as Caden Proctor did. But I think it's clear he would not have committed. Like he's not in the same place he was when he committed. So, you know, we're not saying that. I think it's fair to say you're not saying, Tom, that he's definitely a Hawkeye now because we felt right. like when he committed that, hey, if he's taken on these expectations that Iowa has for him, he's he's a Hawkeye. And now that's in doubt again. And that's the other thing with the, you know, trying to compare it to Caden. I mean, Caden was right at the end of the process where he was running around to Oregon and Alabama. And this kid's, you know, like I said, he's 14 months or, you know, 13 months from signing anywhere. Right. So there's just a lot more time where you can say, all right, we'll just, let's just slow things up here. Let's, call off the engagement let's see what's out there and we can always come back to each other and i think that's what they're going to do and iowa will probably still continue to recruit him as they should and he will probably continue to show up at iowa things as he probably should but you wonder the one thing you do have to wonder about is was there any damage to that relationship or do people just kind of understand now that hey this is just how the game's done um, and, and to be honest, since I'm positive that Iowa told him since he took the visit, hey, this is the action you should probably take if you want to continue to take visits. And he's doing that. Um, and he's receptive to, to this is the way I need to do it. I think there's a there's a decent chance for reconciliation down the road. Do you believe that there's any link, Tom, to brian's dismissal maybe no. some uncertainty regarding george barnett anything like that at all or maybe even kirk ferentz no i don't think there's anything to that especially you know brian brian wasn't really involved in his recruitment it was just mainly george and i've not gotten any hint of or whiff of george barnett's job is in jeopardy at all um i am curious mark i want to get your opinion on this and we can go back to Tom for, for one final thing. And we, we wanna, if he's got time to answer a, a question on the press conference today, great. But sure. yeah, uh, t- Mark, Tom mentioned, uh, you know, the expectation from Iowa's side and I understand it, that once you're committed, they don't feel like they should have to continue to recruit you. But I mean, is that fair to you? I mean, I know maybe that, that makes sense to us, but in this era with NIL and the transfer portal and power to the players, 
I mean, I agree. A commitment should be a commitment. But reasonably, we all understand decommits happen all the time. Wouldn't it be in your best interest to continue to recruit a player hard even all the way up to signing day, even if he commits 13 months or 15 months prior to signing day? Well, I think there's a difference between what is fair and what's effective. So I know Dabo Sweeney at Clemson is very hard line about he doesn't want any commitments from anyone and will not allow them to. And when I say allow, that's not something that he can enforce, but he's very firm about, you know, don't be taking any other visits once you've committed because we take that very seriously. Now, is that going to be an effective way to recruit going forward? Um, probably less than it has been in the past. And with a with a coach, the level of Debo Sweeney or Kirk Ferentz, they can certainly get away with what others can't uh, because of the level of coach and their reputation in their program. Uh, but I would think it's going to be more, less effective going forward because of all the options and, and just because of the, the way the recruiting game is is played going forward. And Tom, what I think of when hey. I think of players like this, I think of Caden Proctor, Eno Benjamin. Now I think yeah. of Nick Brooks and those like it's not like those guys just proved to be flops. I mean, we don't know Proctor's, you know, he's still playing his freshman year, but he's last I knew he yeah. was starting, you know, Benjamin was you know, breaking all kinds of records in the Pac-12. So, I mean, like, is it fair? Like, are, are you how, how do you feel about the critics that would say that's kind of an antiquated way of look and stubborn way of looking at recruiting if you're Kirk Ferentz? Well, let me let me clarify something. Um, I, I don't mean to say that Iowa stops recruiting those kids. Once they're committed, they continue to recruit them just as hard as if they were uncommitted. So that let, let me just <laughs> I don't want people to think that, oh, well, they just get them committed and then they just sit them off to the side. That's not yeah. how it works. They are still calling them every week. They're still sending them notes. They're still getting them on campus. They're still going to their schools. They're still doing all of those things that you have to do to recruit a kid. They're not just putting them off to the side. Um, I, I don't think it really, uh, fire your question back at me again. Well, just, I'm just curious, you, you, you feel like there's a, an argument that could be made that it's a little bit antiquated to expect yeah. a, a committed student athlete now just to say, nope, I'm not taking visits, even if Alabama or Texas calls. It is. Um, I think it's, it's a hard way to do business. Um, a choice um but i think also tell those kids and their parents hey if you want, want to still engage in the recruiting process that's perfectly fine just decommit you know right. just open things up because if you're going on those visits if you're dating you're not married to us anymore i think it's fair i think yeah. it's fair from both sides i think it's fair for kids to take more visits and i think it's fair for iowa to tell them then just decommit. We can still recruit you. We'll still, um, you know, keep dating. But um, it, I think it offers clarity for both sides. Kind of feels like a formality, doesn't it? Like you're committed, but you're taking more visits. So like, okay, are you technically committed? Or are you technically decommitted? You know, like what's the difference at this point? Gu guys are not actually l locked in. It's like being engaged until you sign yeah. the dotted line and put that ring on your partner's finger. It's like, legally they're not you're not bound so yeah 